How's it going everybody? This is the newest acquisition to the shop. This is a 1940s Delta DP220 14 inch drill press. You can see this is a tabletop, tabletop model and this thing is a little bit worse for wear but it does run. All the bearings seem to be good condition in it. It does have a lot of overspray from looks like somebody had this next to a spray painting booth so we're going to be getting this thing cleaned up and put back into service. Um, as far as a date, this thing's 40s from what I can tell, so that style of Delta emblem right there, that was used between 1941 and 1952. So there's no serial number that, so I can't really um, hone in on when exactly it was built. Um, you can see right in here, they did braze it, so there was probably a crack here at one time from somebody over tightening this bolt here. So that has been repaired, but it, I don't see any cracks forming since then, so we'll sand that off and make sure that it's looking good. Um, motor is a time period specific, or time period correct motor, so this is a Delta. This looks like a double duty motor here. I'll get this all cleaned up here, so we'll actually be able to see this emblem here. And I still do have the golden red sticker here. We'll try to get this cleaned up and saved as well. My intent with this drill press, since I already have a floor model of these, is to use this as a dedicated tapping drill. So what that means is over here I have this tapping head here. This is an auto-reversing Jarvis Torquematic. And it has the spindle right here that goes inside the quill of that drill press. And that mates up inside of here to those two holes, those pins going those corresponding holes there.
All right, I think we can call this project finished. Super happy with how this came out. In that last clip, you saw me struggling to get that tap to go all the way through and come back out of that uh, piece of tubing there. And I just need to get in this tapping head here and adjust the clutches. Uh, this tapping head is designed to go up to 5 16 of an inch, so that shouldn't have been too big of an issue. I was trying to push through a quarter 20 uh, tap and it just needs to have the clutches adjusted. It hasn't, I opened it up once, but I didn't do any adjustments to it. So we'll have to get in there and do some proper adjustments to it. Uh, the next part here, you can see the frame there has been brazed together. Um, that was where a crack was, I'm assuming, by the previous owner. And when they braze that together, that caused some distortion in the cast iron, causing it so that tube that the body of the drill press sits in, uh, I wasn't able to get that all the way through. So I had to go in there with a Dremel and use a sanding disc to grind out that top part there, uh, take out a couple thousands of material so that tube could go all the way through. Um, let's see, here on the front, uh, this is where the, um, I guess the depth gauge would go. You take that off when you have these tapping heads on here. This tapping head is designed for the DP220 and that handle right there, that is what you're using to keep that torque from pulling against the quill. So you use, need to hold that handle while you're pushing tap down so you're not at it, letting all that torque rest against the quill. The motor here, super happy with how that came out. It was a quick paint job. I was not able to get into that uh, motor there because those screws, when I really reefed on them, I felt like I was about ready to break them. They were stuck in there super tight. So I got to thinking, you know, the bearings are good in this. There's not really any reason for me to get in there and mess around with it and potentially break those screws and cause more of an issue than what I already have. It's working just fine. So like the old adage goes, if it isn't break, broken, don't fix it. I uh, got a little bit of discoloring in that uh, sticker there because I had to scrape it off. I was using WD-40 and a, a toothpick. Uh, this one came out a little bit better. I was using able, able to use a brass brush and some WD-40 to get all that overspray that the previous owner had done off of it. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with how this came out. Uh, everything polished up real nice. I spend a lot more time on this one doing polishing. This is my original one that I have. This is a four model. And believe it or not, that is all the original paint except for the belt guard and the motor. Um, there, the emblem is here. So this is a 1952 and newer Delta Milwaukee emblem. But that serial number dates this back into the 1940s. So this is a problem with these old machines is trying to date them. Um, either the information online is wrong or that top uh, pulley guard there with that emblem has been exchanged. So you can take these off pretty easily and are interchangeable between machines. This old delta there with the three lines, that is designed for, or that is a uh, 1941 to 52, I believe. Um, so yeah, those, those covers come off and can be interchanged and also the history that I'm able to find online makes it kind of hard to date this. So I'm thinking this is the 1940s era, but not 100% sure. Also they made different styles of the belt guards there for different styles of drill presses. So they had what they would consider a high speed. I believe the term that they used in the advertising was high sensitivity drill press. So it just had a different belt design. It actually used a flat belt instead of a uh, V belt which you see on these two drill presses right here, and which is pretty common for most drill presses you're gonna see these days. Uh, the flat belt just offers less rolling resistance and can be operated at higher speeds. My floor model right here, a uh, couple of accessories I have for it. Uh, I have this uh, retirement light here and the back belt guard. I wasn't able to get that for the tabletop one that I just restored because it doesn't have the holes in that front belt guard casting to mount it. Um, here's the motor on the back of my original one, and I wasn't able to save the sticker that was originally right there. Um, it was just too far gone when I got it and was repainting this, so I just painted over it. So there we go. We have uh, two drill presses here. Um, I really like having just the option to have, you know, different uh, presses set up for different operations. Uh, this one I use primarily with a wire wheel. Um, I just have it chucked up in there, then I have that flexible vacuum hose 
that I can adjust and set wherever I need to so I'm able to get all the chips and anything that's flying off that wire wheel sucked up so it's not going in there that I'm breathing. So yeah, there you go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully this inspired you to get out in the shop and start doing some restorations of your own. And uh, once again, thank you guys for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe.